All right, shalom, shalom. All praises, honor, and glory as always be unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy, being Yahweh, and that of His Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh, Shai. These be the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you've been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles of GMS Gray Millstone, who do real wealth, the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who is his truth, and peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with the 140 and 4,000 prophets, all the way down to the remaining elect of our nation prophesied to come out of the lies and deceits of this world and return unto the knowledge of who we truly are, man, which are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, man. You see? The earth has been given into the hand of the wicked according to the prophecies of this Bible. And they've caused the whole world to be deceived, man. And they've used our book, the Holy Bible, to do so. All right? And with that being said, you see, I just did a recent video going in on what a church is. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and land back off of that and, uh, you know, go into... You know a little bit of a meaning of what this third temple is what this is talking about here in daniel all right and how this third temple would be afflicted man this is uh matthew 24 and i'm just gonna start at the first few verses just to just to uh break down what's going on here it says and yahweh shai went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and yahweh shai said unto them see ye not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? You see, so when would this ending be? And this temple that he's referring to right here, all right, this is the... the you know, the, our temple, man. This is the temple that, that, you know, the second temple that we had built up, you know, to uh, uh, worship the Heavenly Father, man. Now, Yahweh Shai here, he's telling you that this temple is going to be destroyed, man. You see? And and this is something that they use against him, ultimately, to uh, crucify him, because they couldn't find, you know, any valid reason to do so, other than accusations, you see? But this third temple, all right, would be destroyed, man. All right, which at this time, again, it was the second temple, which was ultimately destroyed in 70 AD, as we know, according to history. All right. But as you're going to see throughout this lesson, this was really a, 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 an example, all right, of what was going to happen to this third temple, man. So let me go ahead and just jump down to verse... Uh, 15 God, 15 it says when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand you see so when you see there was something that was spoken of prophesied about in the book of Daniel man, which is what the abomination of desolation and that's what we're going to get into what that is all right, and how this is going to happen once yet more under the elect. And this is known as the time of Jacob's trouble, man. All right, but first, let me go ahead and grab another couple precepts just to put, you know, something in perspective here, man. This is, uh, which I think this is the precept I'm looking for, if I'm not mistaken. God. Yep. This is 1 John 2 and 18, and it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? So they're asking Yahweh Shai for a sign. Verse 19. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days will I raise it up. You see, so this temple that we're talking about here, all right, that very same temple that he was referring to on the Mount of Olives would be destroyed, man, right? And he's saying in three days, it'll be raised back up. All right. Verse two or 20. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days. So they say, hey, man, how could you how could you 
how could you take this thing down and rebuild it in three days when it took all these years to be constructed? You see, verse 21. But he spake of the temple of his body, you see, and all throughout the scriptures, man, the tabernacle, the tabernacle of David, you see, it being built up, what have you. This has all been, been an example, all right, of the temple of Yahweh Shai's body, man, and how eventually this would be the ultimate, this would be the temple that would get us there, man. Not by any carnal means, not built by the hands of men, as uh, uh, Acts 7 and... Uh, 48 would tell you, man. All right? This was not a carnal thing, man. It was a spiritual thing. The body of Yahweh Shai. You see, when, when he was crucified, he was raised up. You see, glorified. His blood was spilt to atone for the sins of the elect. And so through that, the elect were able to return, man. The spirit was able to come back upon our people. Life was able to be restored unto us. And our temple, as we, as we see it around you today, is being rebuilt man you see rebuilt and prepared for this time of the of the last uh, uh woe so to speak man jacob's trouble the last time of the uh, uh, abomination of desolation to get at work you see verse 22 it says so yeah man the temple the uh, tab tabernacle of david the temple man it has a very deep meaning Verse 22, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yahweh Shai had said. You see, so then they were able to receive it, man. All right, so we make up this uh, this third temple, man, which is, you know, what we get into on the last. You know, let me grab one more precept. All right, and then we'll go ahead and jump into the prophecy. Um, First Peter. Chapter 2 and verse 5. Ye also are lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to the Heavenly Father by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. You see? So we make up this last temple, man. You see? Now, according to the prophecies, you see, our enemy would rule and continue his reign of terror. And fulfill all of the prophecies of the book of Daniel, all the, the the tyranny that would come with the rule of these different nations, you see, and ultimately being fulfilled with Esau's last governing body, man, this beast system that's set up today, all right? That's when our, the spirit would come back upon our people, we would be restored, this tabernacle would completely be rebuilt, man, but it began all the way back here during the time of Yahweh Shai. You see, more specifically, when he was uh, risen and the spirit was returned upon us, man. All right. Because you got to ask yourself, what happened to all these prophets, all these disciples, all of them? You see, were put to death, man. While the uh, uh, apostles were, you see. But the ministry was was <clears throat> was uh, uh, afflicted, man. All right. And it wouldn't be until what? Until the last days that, that this truth would be restored unto our people, would be restored into health, and, and this temple be fully rebuilt to the point to withstand the time of Jacob's trouble, man, this last win. All right? So let's go ahead and jump into some prophecies, man. We'll go ahead and go to the book of Daniel and see what this abomination of desolation speaks of. All right? And you're going to see... Well, you know, let's just go ahead and get into it, man. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of jump around in here just to kind of get the point across, man. You can read this whole chapter on your own. It really breaks itself down as you continue throughout the chapter. But uh, this is Daniel 9, and chap uh, it's like a chapter 9, and verse 27, and it reads, And he shall confirm... The, uh, it's like, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. You see that, man? Going on. Even until the consummation and the determined, the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You see? So basically, man, there would be a time in which our 
tabernacle, our, our place of offering, you see, would be trampled upon to the point in which Esau would, would, would both make it abominable and desolate, man. This is likened unto the abomination of desolation, you see? And there, and there, as we were reading in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, what did he say? He's talking about 70 AD. You're going to see this place be destroyed. But when we see the abomination of desolation, what was it? That was the Roman Empire destroying, uh, 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 destroying Jerusalem in 70 AD, man. But there was still what? A spiritual house, man. His body, as we just read. This is ultimately... You see that whole, really, the, the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, it, it's going in on 70 AD and what have you. But ultimately, man, it's prophetic for these last times, man. You see? Because this is going to be the great and final war to end all wars, man. All right? The very last the, and everlasting victory. So really everything all throughout these scriptures, man, is prophetic or an example of what was to come, man. The walls of Jericho, the first Exodus, man, you name it. David and Goliath, you see? All of this is an example of what we are going through and what ultimately we have to go through. What we still have ahead of us, man. All right, but let me go ahead and jump back, you know, to get a little bit further of an understanding here. This is uh, verse 21, it says, Yet yeah, whilst I was yet speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at as the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Um, so lucky. let me go ahead and jump to the eighth chapter, man. That's not the verse I was looking for. This is Daniel chapter eight. And, uh, verse 13 it says then i heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot so how long is this abomination of desolation going to last now let's go ahead and back up or we'll go forward a little bit just to show who this is speaking of right here all right because this in particular isn't the Roman government and it isn't Esau's last B system either but nonetheless it's still an example for uh, you know this great victory over this last B system man but this is a uh, Daniel 8 and 21 it says and the rough goat is the king of Grisha you see let me go ahead and back up on verse verse 20 it says the ram which thou sawest having two horns of the kings of Midia and Persia so what he's going in on is the ions the different rulerships that would bear rule within this world going all the way back since the Babylonian Empire man you see Daniel was thousands of years before this man and he still was able to see and, and accurately depict all these different nations that would bear rule all right so the Medes the Persians and the rough goat was the king of Grisha and the great horn which thou saw between his eyes is the first king being Alexander you see he that brought the the, the Grecians together to make what was what would be, then be called Greece verse 22 now that being broken whereas four stood up for it four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation but not in his power so four nation four four the and, and that's his four generals as you're gonna see it'll 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 break it down further in the book of Maccabees but he had four generals that stood up after him well you can look it up just in a history book too man but go read but the book of Maccabees, the first chapter, and it'll, it'll clearly break this down, man. So he had his four generals that ruled after him, and that's when, you know, all manner of wickedness began to uh, uh, pan forth and play out on the earth. But what was one of the things he did, man? Made, they, they took the temple and made it abominable and desolate. 
began to sacrifice pigs and what have you. You see, destroyed our temple, man. And that's what the celebration of Hanukkah is actually all about. You see, is, is us, the, the, the Maccabees, having the victory over the Grecians to obtain that temple again, man. All right. So you see, it was broken down here. When you go into Daniel, what is it talking about? The Greek Empire. The Greek Empire wasn't, they were not no type of power. You see, for the most part anymore, it was the Romans coming into power during the time of Yahweh Shine. It's the Romans that came to destroy that temple. Now, who came up in that image once more? Esau, ultimately, man. The same people, once again, with the same architecture, the same government system, man. The Greeks and the Romans all over again, man. All right? This place, Esau, the Caucasoid, and his government is going to come against you Israelites. Those of you who are in the truth, just as they did in ancient times. So let me go ahead and uh, jump to the book of Maccabees, man, and we'll close it up after this. Just to further expound upon what we just read. First Maccabees 1. I'm going to just jump down to verse uh, 39. And it reads, Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning. Her Sabbaths into a reproach. Her honor into contempt. So, hey, they took our sanctuary, man. They destroyed our, our, our connecting point between us and the Most High, man. They took away our temple, you see? And this is what the Grecians did during their reign. Verse 58, it says, or so like verse 54, now the 15th day of the month uh, Casliu, in the 140 and 5th year, they set up an abomination of desolation upon the altar and built an idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. You see? So this is what the abomination of desolation was. This is what it's talking about in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter of the 15th verse, when it refers to that man. And you see clearly you, the, the Apocrypha is needed to really fully break that stuff down man all right you know which this whole chapter goes in on the greek empire and what they did and he even goes into naming alexander by name man these different kings that ruled by name the same stuff that daniel going all the way back since the babylonian empire had prophesied man had sh had, had, had had showed you through the holy spirit of yahweh by shim yahweh shai what would befall upon us during all these years man and hey, now we're at the time of this very last uh, uh, abomination of desolation coming up against us, man. The harbinger of death. As the book of Habakkuk 2 says, he who enlarges the, his desire as hell and is as death, man. The enemy, the wicked one, the base of man, getting ready to destroy, man. To bring forth Jacob's trouble, which is meant really to perfect us, man. The elect are going to overcome through this time and be solidified within this truth, while the two-third are gonna be sifted out due to the lack of faith that they did not build up during this time of grace. That's why we go out there, that's why we do what we do, that's why we put our hands to the plow to overcome this time, man. So with that little woman's edifying, call out your light, y'all, by Shem Yahweh Shabbat, by Shem Rekakwa Dash. honors into the obvious new apostles of GMS, great millstone, peace, love, blessing, salutations, under the elect, shalom.